Top 10 Things to Understand When It Comes to Carbon Farming Carbon farming is a concept that has gained popularity in recent years, especially at European level, where it is becoming a milestone of the European Green Deal. However, as is often the case, behind the simplest concepts lies complex reality. What is truly carbon farming? What is its potential in Europe? What are its limits? In this video, we take on the challenge to explain 10 key points of the debate from the farming community's perspective. 1. What is carbon farming? To get started, there is no single scientific or legal definition of what carbon farming is. Debates exist in the scientific and political field regarding the scope, the practices covered and the climate policy design it might be part of. For the farming and cooperative community, carbon farming refers to farm management practices that aim to deliver climate mitigation in agriculture. Depending on the farm, it involves the management of both land and livestock, soils, inputs and vegetation. It includes mainly three types of actions. 1. Carbon removal, which is the sequestration and storage of carbon in soils and harvested products. 2. The avoidance of emissions, consisting in preventing the loss of already stored carbon. And 3. The emissions reductions, which aims to limit emissions created by work on farms. Carbon farming is not just a set of environmentally friendly practices. It also has the potential to raise socio-economic standards in the rural community by creating a new market-based source of income for farmers. This second pillar is key to increase the investment capacity of farmers and foresters and to ensure the continuity of projects over time. 2. What are the concrete agricultural practices that fall under carbon farming? The agronomic, technical or technological options to mitigate carbon emissions are numerous and very often complementary between livestock or crops farms. In livestock, this may involve optimised feed, herd performance, manure management, advanced management of grasslands the creation of low-emission livestock housing or biogas digesters. In arable farming practices, such as the establishment of cover crops, improved rotations, peatland preservation, precision fertilisation, pyrolysis for biochar, or expanding agroforestry systems, are some of the potential options. In general, more than 40 different types of actions have been identified by academics that could fall into five main categories of carbon farming interventions. 1. Agroforestry system establishment 2. Maintenance of soil organic carbon 3. Livestock and manure management and 4. Nutrient management on croplands and grasslands 5 peatland re-wetting and restoration. 3. Which European countries have the greatest carbon farming potential? There is an interesting potential in all European countries. However, as our countries are very diverse in terms of soil structure, forests and agriculture, some options are more interesting than others depending on in which regions farms are located. For instance, the preservation of peatland soils is showing greater potential in Northern Europe than in Southern Europe. At the opposite, agroforestry is showing greatest mitigation potential in Southern and Eastern Europe. Cost-effective mitigation potential related to livestock and nutrient management in soil are more equally shared on the continent. This is also why carbon farming cannot be a one-size-fits-all approach. 4. 
What is the emission reduction potential of carbon farming in the EU? According to a public study commissioned by the European Parliament in 2021, the additional EU carbon farming mitigation potential ranges between 101 to 444 million tonnes of CO2 equivalent per year. This is equivalent to approximately 3 to 12 percent of the EU's total annual GHG emissions. It implies that even at the low end of its estimated potential, carbon farming could offset 26 percent of the EU's annual agricultural emissions. These figures remain only general estimates. They will partly depend on the type of mechanisms and schemes that will be put in place by public, private operators and farmers. The EU Commission, on its side, expects carbon farming to contribute 42 million tonnes of CO2 storage by 2030, making agriculture a key strategic sector for achieving its Fit for 55 strategy. 5. Are there extra costs for farmers that are eager to engage in carbon farming? Most carbon farming practices have a cost, directly or indirectly. Costs can vary widely depending on the mechanism or mitigation measures implemented. Recent academic projects found that the total cost per tonne of CO2 equivalent can range from few euros to over 200 euros if livestock farmers decide to propose carbon-friendly feed for ruminant. One should not forget that some carbon farming practices could also cause reduction in yields, which increases the price of adopting such measures. Besides direct costs, the adoption of carbon farming involves many indirect costs, such as time spent on training or administrative time related to monitoring and reporting progress on the farm. To make carbon farming popular and sustainable, it will only make sense if the benefits outweigh the costs that farmers face. This is why market approaches to policy intervention and private schemes matter to see the uptake of carbon farming on farms and secure a fair carbon price for farmers. 6. On which economic models can carbon farming be developed? There are different ways that farmers can be paid to implement carbon farming practices both based on private or public funds. In short, three main models exist in Europe. 1. Direct public funding, as it is the case with the Common Agricultural Policy CAP, or the EU's LIFE programme. 2. Another model is based on the relation between an agri-food company and a group of farmers that accept a number of carbon farming practices in return for additional income paid by the agri-food company. 3. A third option is a system in which farmers are paid via private carbon offset certificates by a third party, like a certification scheme or specialised bodies eager to compensate for their emissions by undertaking action that counts towards the EU's ambitious climate policy targets. Each approach is obviously very different with advantages and disadvantages that are important to know. For farmers and foresters, to be successful, carbon farming should be voluntary and follow a market-based approach. The upscale of carbon farming practices could be supported by EU-funded projects, specific funds and partially through the CAP and an enabling legislative framework as a revised LULUCF. However, to be effective and to truly reward farmers and foresters, the future EU carbon credit system should be market-based. 7. How do farmers earn money and how to control the system? In carbon farming schemes, whether public or private, there are broadly two types of payment plans based on different levels of control. The first one is the most common one today. It is an action-based payment. Farmers receive a set payment for taking a particular climate-friendly action, as is commonly the case in the CAP. These types of payments are relatively simple, 
with limited monitoring requirements for farmers and administrators as it remains easy to check whether the action has been conducted or not. The second type of payment is result-based. Farmers receive a payment that depends on the actual mitigation outcome that they deliver, mostly in tons of CO2 equivalent, regardless of the specific actions taken. Result-based payments require that the mitigation outcome be quantified and verified, which requires costly and complex monitoring and reporting. Some carbon farming projects are also trying to mix action and result-based payments. This approach is used mainly to cover implementation costs or to reduce the financial risk for farmers. 8. Are there many examples of concrete carbon farming projects? Across the EU, multiple private initiatives led by large food groups, agri-cooperatives, startups and professional organisations are promoting the implementation of carbon farming and the selling of carbon credits. We can spot some of these projects in Denmark, the Netherlands, Belgium, France, Spain and Portugal, to name a few member states. There is now a need for harmonisation, transparency and massification of the effort in the face of climate change challenges. This is why the European Commission is currently working to move this issue forward. European farmers and cooperatives support this voluntary approach as a whole. 9. Is carbon farming the silver bullet? The barriers found in the development of carbon farming are still numerous. First, a huge work of information and knowledge sharing on carbon farming practices is still required. In this, agri-cooperatives can play a key role. From a technical point of view, there is a huge challenge to ensure that carbon monitoring and reporting on farms is done regularly and in the right way. In fact, monitoring and reporting systems can become extremely expensive and cumbersome for some farmers. It is also essential to provide a stable framework to avoid that carbon sequestered and stored in soils and biomass is intentionally or unintentionally released back into the atmosphere, undoing any positive climate benefit of carbon farming. Carbon farming can also raise questions about the balance of power between farmers and the actors proposing or deciding on agronomic practices that are considered fair. Finally, one should never forget that carbon farming is only part of the solution in our fight against climate change. Reducing and avoiding emissions must remain the main goal for all economic actors, including consumers and the industry. In line with the Paris Agreement and the EU climate law, carbon farming should not compromise food security. 10. Is there any other way to store carbon today? Apart from the natural storage of carbon by the biosphere, there are still other available technical alternatives. Potential sequestration alternatives to carbon farming include scrubbing CO2 from the air with machines, fertilising oceans to prompt algal to carry carbon to the seabed, storing or reusing the carbon dioxide emitted by electricity generation, storing of carbon in biochar. In the end, none of these options can store carbon as naturally nor as efficiently as farming, while at the same time producing the quality food we all need.